mean, something happens, shut up. Okay, for the love of God, shut up. How's it going, guys? So, if you follow our YouTube channel or any of the Facebook forums starting the beginning of last year, or if you're new to the channel, it's time for you to know, right? So, this is one of the original Bronco Sport Badlands editions. Now, when I say original, I mean this went out on a California showroom, and this was at a time when you did not see them at all on a dealership lot, and if you came across one, it was a base model, some of the first editions maybe, but mostly a base model, mostly blacks, mostly grays, and this is what we wanted. We were out in California visiting family, and I decided to look. I decided to get on the internet and look, and I found a dealership that claimed they had this vehicle, so we drove over there. And when we got there, they did not have the vehicle on the lot and nobody would tell us where the vehicle was. And the only thing that they told us is that it was at a sister dealership and that they could have it there for us in a day or two. That was it. They refused to tell us what lot it was on. They refused to give us any information um, because our mindset at the time was, I want to drive it, I want to touch it, and then I'll consider it, right? So we did what any people, you know, our age in our late 20s, early 30s would do. And we did some research and we found on the front plate in the picture was a small little uh, one of the dealer plates that said where it was at. So we called them up and we said, do you have this vehicle on your showroom? And they said they did. And we said, all right, well, here's the deal. We're talking with one of your sister dealerships and they're trying to make you send it to them. Don't send it to them. And we will drive, take off right now, drive the three hours and show up if you're willing to let it go at MSRP. Not a dollar over, we have this much to spend, this is the check, and we'll walk out the showroom with it. And they said, you know, they, they asked some questions. They said, we gotta go talk to our manager, whatever. We're talking about at a time when you could not test drive a Badlands, and the only thing that people really knew was the difference was the engine, and uh, they pushed me real hard to test drive a base model, and I said, I'm not going to test drive an inline three if I have zero intentions of buying an inline three because the thing I want to feel is the engine and the drivetrain and the drivability. And the Badlands comes with a different suspension and a different engine and lockers and th this is your off-road package, okay? So we went and picked it up. A couple days later, I'm talking like maybe three days, <sighs> something bad happened. Talking about like one of those things that when it happens, you're so stressed out that you almost want to lose your mind. So we go into Target. And we're looking at just picking up a few things before we start our trip from California back to Ohio. We get a call over the loudspeaker. May the owner of a yellow Bronco Sport, yellow Bronco is what they said. Clearly, clearly we are the only yellow Bronco in this parking lot. I am talking like when we bought this thing, you might see one other Bronco on the road every week or so if you were lucky and barely seen it off in the distance and they were, none of them were the cyber orange or gold as we call it not a single one we went like eight months before we seen another cyber orange bronco sport so i mean we could like post on facebook groups and there might be like one other person right which is funny for the sense this is like the color that ford used in all of their advertisements you go look at like most bronco sport early advertisements and they were all this color then they barely produced them in this color so I go running out the door. I'm just gonna assume that somebody smoked it, right? Somebody didn't stop, missed the turn, and they smoked it. That's my assumption. And I get out the door to find a tree has fallen on our vehicle. Now, the two days before this, leading up to this, there was high winds. This day, there wasn't a bit of wind. It was a nice sunny day, and a tree had fallen on our vehicle. I'm obviously very, very pissed about because not only could we not find another one, we had to drive three hours to get it, and now a tree has fallen on it, right? I lose my mind a little bit, but let's just be honest, okay? Uh, I'm a Marine grunt vet. I, I lost my mind like, like 10%. Probably more than that, but 10% is what we're saying. I lost my mind, okay? The, the people that were there they tried to play it off like it was nothing and I made sure it was a very big deal of no you're going to call in a professional to remove the tree you're liable for all damages I have done nothing wrong here and you will pay for any repairs right 
don't let these companies brush it off and don't let them say things. Um, the issue is, is if they say things or they write something down that's a little off, it's your word against theirs and you're likely going to lose, okay? So stand your ground and do it in a professional manner is what I'm going to say. And like when it happened to us, so I stood my ground. I said, no, we went into the store or parked it legally in a spot and a tree that you failed to maintain has broken and fallen. There's no wind. No one has hit the tree. Nothing else has happened. A tree that you have failed to maintain has fallen and landed on our vehicle. And the only thing, the, the only thing that saved me from this not being considered a natural event and which we would have to pay for is the fact that the tree was clearly rotted at the bottom and people had stuffed trash in there over time, like candy wrappers and things like that. So the tree was clearly rotted and deteriorating and they hadn't maintained it. That is the only thing that has saved me. The reason I say this, okay, I took pictures and videos of everything. Um, but part of those pictures were showing the deterioration. If you have an event like this happen to you, if a tree falls on your vehicle or something blows out of somewhere and you're at a store, which is considered private property, which most of these stores are on private property, you need to show or you need to prove neglect. Okay, so that means say a tree branch does fall on your vehicle. In this case, this tree branch looked very alive, but I took pictures of the base where it broke off. Okay, that's where I took pictures of, which showed rotting and deterioration. If say you go in a branch falls off of a tree and the whole tree is green and that branch is brown, that shows that that branch was dead and should have been cut long ago. And it shows that some sort of neglect for maintaining the property. That's what you need to look at. Okay, you need to look at potential neglect or potentially why they that company is at fault for your vehicle now clearly you park in a parking lot and nothing touches anything and your vehicle gets damaged somebody else should be responsible reasonably right uh, i mean your insurance is going to cover it anyways but it's just the fact of like you didn't do anything why would you pay for the damages um and yes events happen in nature i mean i live in a wooded area I mean, the wind's blowing, but you see it's all trees. There's trees right here above my house. Just, I mean, the fall time, a wind blew and knocked a tree over at my neighbor's house and landed on their house. Natural events happen, but it's that just that separation between neglect or and an event. You're going to be upset, okay? Take a step back, take a breather, and remember that it is going to get paid for. Either that's by your insurance or by their insurance. And if it does get paid for by your insurance, you need to push that it was a natural caused event so that way your insurance doesn't raise. So that's why pictures are important. And I'm talking pictures of everything. Take pictures of your vehicle from every angle. Take pictures of the tree or whatever hit your vehicle from every angle. You need to prove that you weren't in the vehicle. That's a big standard, okay? That you didn't do it. It wasn't your fault and uh, that you were legally parked. Just to go into some other events that have happened over the years, we stopped to help a young girl on the side of the road. Uh, my wife and I, we, we help out with, you know, like uh, the emergency response team here locally. And even before that, if something were to happen, we're gonna go there and help. We're gonna give water, we're gonna bring donations, something. And so one thing we did is, is a few years back, we came up on a young girl who had crashed her car. We were in different vehicles because we were getting tire changed on her car at the time. And I parked my truck at the top of the hill on an icy day, the top of the hill with the lights flashing. That way nobody would slide into me, okay? Because that puts my life in danger. They're coming over this overpass or seeing me at the bottom of the hill trying to help this girl and they're slamming their brakes and sliding down at me. So I parked my truck at the top. So a guy had slid into, into the front of my truck at, at speed, like 55 mile an hour smoked the front of my truck. It's a Dodge Dually, it'll survive. Um, but the guy's vehicle exploded. Now he played it off and tried to play it to the police like I was at fault that my vehicle was in the middle of the road. I didn't really say much to that guy, okay? I kind of just said, okay, uh-huh, mm-hmm. And so when I talked to a police officer, I explained to him, I'm outside of my vehicle, my vehicle's parked at the top of the hill, visible from a distance, and the guy slid into it. Another thing I did is I took pictures of my vehicle before it ever moved. I took pictures not only of my vehicle, but facing the other direction, showing what my vehicle could see and who could see me as they drove up towards it. This is important, okay? So when his insurance called me to get a report, one thing that they kept asking me was, 
do you have any injuries? Are you injured? Was anybody else injured? And I kept pushing the, the same statement. No one was in the vehicle. It was a parked vehicle on top of the he on the hill, top of the hill, with its four ways and parking lights on to protect me, helping a young girl at the bottom. So every time they asked me, "Is anyone injured?" I didn't say no. I said, "I said it was a parked vehicle. No one was in the vehicle, and the parking lights were on, and the flashers were on at the top of the hill." Um, a statement that he kind of made to the police officer, which I found hilarious, was. Uh, that he had seen the vehicle, and I, I was listening and I read the police report, and he said that he had seen the vehicle from a distance, and uh, that he didn't know why it was in his lane. That was his statement, okay? Grasp onto those moments, because he just said, I seen the vehicle, and I knew it was there, okay? He, he claimed that it was visible, and that was what saved me, and I, and you know, eventually I asked the lady, I said, look, I don't want to be short with you, but how would I possibly be at fault for this? I'm not in the vehicle and I was legally parked, you know, I was legally parked even if it was in the road with my four ways on, my emergency flashers and my parking lights. I said, how am I even, how can I potentially be at fault for this? She said, in her words, my favorite words ever were, well, he hit a stationary object and he does have that, you know, he, he does need to be in control of his vehicle. Um, so just, the, re the reason I bring this up is you need to take pictures and you need to watch the wording. When you're when you, something happens, shut up, okay? For the love of God, shut up. I'm bad for, for getting pissed off and yelling and screaming, and sometimes you just need to shut up. And when you can step back and calm down, that makes a difference. Now, like two weeks later in the middle of our trip, Somebody backed down the side of this this side of the vehicle and ripped the whole thing off. Handles, mirrors, everything gone. Crinkled the side of the door in. I, I was not in a shut up moment. Let me tell you what. I was in a pissed off yelling and screaming moment. So one thing when a tree falls on your vehicle and you're like, okay, we can replace the stuff on top. When somebody just blatantly backs down the side. I, oh my God. We were at a hotel and I parked at the end of the parking lot where no other cars were around me underneath a light post with... Can you see them? These right here, these are solar lights. These turn on in the middle of the night and illuminate the, the ground around the vehicle, right? Is the brightest color vehicle illuminated under a light at the end of the parking lot with parking spots open on each side of me. Somebody backed a big 15 passenger van into the side of it and just kept going. Just drug it, okay? So we came out the next morning and I was I was livid. I was screaming and yelling that whoever owned the van better get outside because we're getting this taken care of and they're... I'm going to stop ranting, okay? We're here to talk about cr crashes and what you need to do. That was another one, though. That guy took responsibility, but I took a lot of pictures of the impact, the damage to the van, the damage to my vehicle. It was a rental, so I took a lot of pictures of his van, took a lot of pictures of my vehicle, and, I, you know, I talked to the, the manager of the property. I said, we're getting police on scene. They're going to write a report. I want you to write a report as well, and I, I created a paperwork trail that said I did not do anything. I was sleeping in the middle of the night. I didn't do it, okay? That's that's what the reports say. So, on the side of the vehicle, first thing I'm going to say, look at the roof rack. See right there, there? That drop in the middle? That's from that tree. Um, it was a heavy tree. It took like four dudes to lift it straight up while I backed out. Actually, they lifted it up and I was going to back out. But when they lifted it up, a car pulled in behind me and stopped. So I physically couldn't back up. So they they literally like picked the tree up, moved it over, and just threw it. Right? They threw it at this car because I mean, four dudes lift up a tree. You can't set it back down. When it happened, a branch had broken from hitting back here, and it actually was against the window. One of our big fears was that obviously, if anything moved, if we open and close the doors, or if we and they put the tree back down, it would shatter that window. So when they picked it up, it was up. Um, but. We, there is a small dent here that we never did get repaired. That was just by choice. Uh, we bought it to off-road it. We said, you know what, that dent's not that bad. Um, one thing I noticed recently, and this is only recently, um, is that there's a small, you can't even see it, small little paint chip right there. Um, that's something I am going to get repaired before any rust can ever occur. Everything else is generally up here, okay? There was a lot of tree sap which made it hard to tell what was damaged and what wasn't damaged. So that was an issue. But if I get up here, you know, you can see. You really can't, okay? There's really not a whole lot going on. This is just rust drifting off of this cheap roof rack. Don't be fooled by that. 
Um, but if you look up here, there's just, I mean, there's a couple of microscopic scratches, but nothing really else. The, the roof rack took the blunt of it, okay? And you can see that here. I mean, it's big old gouges out of it. Like I said, there's some scratches in here that are starting to rust. It's a cheap roof rack. Ugh. I'm not upset about it. I mean, it does suck that it's not perfectly straight now. You can see like the little bow in there. But okay, that's the, that's the most I have to deal with. Obviously, when we got back, this side got fixed um, because that side was just tore up. That side was terrible. You could, you could still use the passenger door, but it was sketchy. Um, I reattached the mirror. I reattached the door handle. It was all knocked off. That was the good thing about, you know, us being, you know, mechanics and working on stuff is I at least knew how to put everything back on. But that goes to another question. You can, I know you, if, if you have the knowledge to fix it, consider not. Um, well, for instance, our, the door was caved in. And I, like I told the guy at the body shop, I said, I know it's rubbing down there on the fender. And I could have beat that out with, with, you know, a hammer and dolly or just a hammer. But I wanted it proof that the fender was being damaged by that. So that way the fender got repaired too. You kind of, you have to weigh the, you have to weigh the, the pros and cons here. Okay. If you fix something, there's that, always that risk that they're going to say it wasn't that bad. I, I do body work. So do I want to fix it and it be good enough for them to say it's not bad enough to come from that accident? Most cases, it's not going to be an issue. Like, especially with it being a new vehicle, it's not an issue. But you know, like. With my truck there was a question of well is the damage on the passenger fender from the accident or was the damage already there um eventually i kind of got fed up with it and i said look just replace the fender or don't i don't care but get my new bumper on because my bumper was pushed all the way back against my wheel and they eventually replaced the fender and you know repainted all that but it was kind of a pain in the butt to be like well what damage came from what incident because it's an older truck and it was already scratched up and stuff you know it's got little paint flakes up in the up on the hood and on the roof and stuff so i don't want you guys to run into that don't if you have damages take a lot of pictures beforehand and then if you need to fix something to make it drivable do it otherwise leave it alone okay i know you want it to look better i know you don't want it to look so beat up but you need it to okay you need it to look bad so that way the the accident report is correct and the body shop will pay for it uh, well, the body shop will charge the insurance for it. The body shop doesn't care what they what it gets paid for. They, whatever insurance will pay for, they'll fix it. Okay. Um. So yes, I wanted to talk about my incidences with this because again, we had a tree fall on one side, and somebody back into the other side. I will say one thing. Okay. Both of these incidences, I would consider possibly it taking out the vehicle. You know, if if something like that happened to like say my Chrysler 300, like a tree fell on it it probably would cause some damage right it, or if somebody backed into the side of it uh, i'm probably it's probably not going to be in great condition in both instances this was able to drive um the tree fell on it we got it off there were some scratches dents and whatever but there's nothing wrong with any of the pillars there's nothing wrong with the roof line nothing wrong with any of that um same thing somebody backed into the side of it the door still worked i mean it was crunchy but it still worked um and everything worked fine i mean and we're talking about like literally crumbling the door from like the passenger fender all the way back like it was bad right it was bad so i have seen pictures because obviously you know like i said we had this since day one we were on all these forums and groups since like day one like we're talking like march or february of last year when they were just coming out and you and they were hard to find but uh you know I've seen them get T-boned. I've seen people stop on the highway and get smoked from the rear end at 55 mile an hour. You know, nobody was injured. The vehicle was in relatively savable condition. There's one couple who, they took their vehicle a little too far outside of their comfort zone and they rolled it off a mountain. Everyone walked away from that crash. Yes, beat up and yes, the vehicle was damaged, but the vehicle rolled literally off a mountain and they were alive. So let's just count that as a win, you know? Um, there's, that's the cool thing now is a lot of these are getting not cool. It's not cool that they get in accidents, but now that they're getting in accidents, you can start comparing the safety testing or the real world safety to what's happening. And they're with stand, they're holding up well and they're, they're uh, you know, not too damaged. They're fixable. It's not like some of these vehicles out there that just simply aren't fixable. They're taking the damage. And again, I, I mean, 
I would never want to talk talk bad on my lovely beauty here, but I'm just saying, you might not hold up so well if if we get T-bone. <laughs> it's it's like it's like 18 years old, but you know, th those are the what's happened to us in our Bronco sport and how well it's held up. And uh, I mean, it's worth it. It's safe for your family. It's safe for you. It's safe for your pets. So get one. Get out there. Explore. Have fun. It's the cheapest for the performance that you can buy. I'll do a video on that, but go out and have fun. Have a good day.